And then the second prayer buster is selfishness. If you take prayer buster number one and prayer buster number two and combine them, they do a lot of damage. James 4, 3 says, if you ask and you don't receive, you've asked with the wrong motives. We're asking selfishly. Wouldn't you admit that really a lot of praying is a little bit selfish? Who's, who'd be honest enough to admit they've, I've prayed some really selfish prayers. I'm going to be honest. God, please, you know, this pain thing that I got going on, this pressure thing, you know, I don't like these hard times. And the Lord says, but you know, you don't want to grow. You don't want to stretch. You don't know that's the way I grow you. That's the way I make you. That's the way I make you strong. No, 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 Lord. I want an easy life. Mm. And then, you know, we, sometimes even when we're praying for our spouses, I know there's some lady that has have said, Oh, Lord, you better fix this husband or I'm going to do it myself. Come on. You need to fix him, Lord. You need to take care of that. And there's some men who've been praying for their wives, kind of similar prayers like that. And it's, and it's not because they're in love. I'm going to tell you that. It's not because they're in love. It's because they're miserable, all right? What they're trying to do is they're trying to, they're trying to pray a selfish prayer. Uh, but here's the thing. I think that if we align our desires more with God's desires, that, 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 that our prayer will become more focused and more powerful. Amen? Well, you say, well, Pastor Bob, is it okay if I pray about things like that? Sure, you can pray about everything, and we ought to pray about everything. But before we pray for a husband or wife to be changed, maybe we ought to pray like this. Lord, what in the world am I doing that I need to change? What can I do? What's the response that I need to have? And sit and listen to that for a while. Come on. Amen. And you'll discover that he probably has some stuff to say. Amen. You say, well, can I pray that I'll be blessed financially? Absolutely. Amen. Jabez prayed a prayer like that. He prayed to be blessed financially. But let me tell you something. When you're praying to be blessed financially, I would encourage you to talk to the Lord about your giving. Amen. Tell him, Lord, I'm a, I, I, I want to give more. I want to be a giver. I want to be that kind of a person. Let me tell you something. God, I believe that God looks for people who are willing to be a channel of God's blessing. I honestly believe that he searches through the earth and he looks for unselfish people who will say, you know, something if, if you if I bless them they're going to bless somebody else because how many of you know sometimes a few dollars can be a miracle to somebody come on how many of you know that's the truth sometimes if somebody gives you some money you could you could be thanking Jesus all week long hello amen that's good preaching today amen prayer buster number three here it is unconfessed sin there's a very scary verse in the Bible, Isaiah 59, 2. It says this, your iniquities, that means those places where you've twisted God's rules, broken His rules, broken His heart. It says your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not hear. Wow. When we've been rebelling against God and not listening to Him, not living our life His way, how many think that's probably not the best time to ask God for a favor? Am I right? Let me give you an example. You come home on a Saturday morning from eating your breakfast at Denny's or wherever you eat it, I don't know. And you look at the yard and you realize, oh man, my lawnmower's broke. The yard totally it's so overgrown it's just looking horrible and you say to yourself I, I really need to do something about the yard and and the, the lawnmower's in the shop and it's not going to be back for two more weeks and then you remember that your neighbor across the street said you know he'd be happy to loan you anything if you'd just if you'd just ask and so you're on your way over there to your neighbor's house and wouldn't you know it your neighbor's little chihuahua dog is out in the yard and i mean this is the most yippity yappity little chihuahua it's nipping 
yapping at your heels. It's yapping. It's barking. And, and uh, you're th- it's football season, man. You're thinking about football. And you realize that ch- Chihuahua is just about the size of a football, okay? And so you think to yourself, man, I'm so tired of this dog. And finally it gets a hold of your pants leg and you can't. So you just back up a little bit. And you think, man, I'm going to see that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make myself a field goal. And you walk right up there and in perfect form, bam, you kick the neighbor's chihuahua. It flies right up over the car. And you're, now you're doing a celebration. You're like, three points, oh yeah. Extra point, whatever. And you're so happy. And then you turn around and there's your neighbor you were going to ask for to borrow his lawnmower. How many of you think that's probably not a good time to ask the neighbor for a lawnmower? Come on. How many what I'm saying today? Oh, I'm preaching a little funny, but I'm telling the truth. And the same is true for God, my friend. When we sin, it's not just against others. It's also against God. David has said this. He said, against you and you only have I sinned. You say, well, pastor, is God holy? Absolutely. He's holy, holy, holy. And when, and, but, but let me tell you something else about God. He's merciful. He's loving. He's unforgiving. He, he, I'm sorry. He's forgiving. He's full of grace. Come Come on. And so, and so when we confess our sins, guess what the Word says? He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So first of all, you got to fix your relationship with God before you ask Him. Okay, prayer buster number four, broken relationships. Uh, husbands, as Scripture says, be considerate as you live with your wives. And treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the grace, gracious gift of life. And the scripture goes on to say, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. That's an incredible verse. You know what that tells me? If I'm not treating my wife right, God's not going to answer all my prayers. My prayers can be hindered. If I'm out of sync with my wife, my prayers can be hindered. Boy, it's quiet in here. But it's true. How many of you want to hear the word or not? Come on, you said bring it on. How many of you still say bring it on? All right. This is another verse in Matthew. It says this is, this is also a paraphrase. It says, this is how I want you to conduct yourself in these matters. If you enter your place of worship and are about to make an offering, suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you. Abandon your offering. Leave immediately. Go to this friend and make things right. Then and only then come back. How many of you know that God puts relationships at a high priority? The relationships with family, the relationships with church members, the relationships with your boss, people that are around you. Keep those things in perspective. Prayer buster number five. It can be a lack of faith. Last week we were in Acts chapter 12 and and you remember Peter got out of prison. He goes and knocks on the door. He's knocking on the door. And a little gal called Rhoda, she goes and he's calling out, Hey, it's Peter. It's Peter. She recognizes Peter's voice. She runs back in. Hey, everybody, Peter's at the door. Guess what? He's out of prison. And they're like, Oh, go sit down and be quiet. That just must be his angel out there. It doesn't sound like they had much faith, does it? And so back 12, 16 says, Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw them, guess what they were? They were astonished. Oh, you mean God's answered our prayers? <laughs> These people have been praying, praying earnestly, and, and you know, for Peter to be rela- released. But when he finally shows up, they're stunned that he's there. Have you ever done that? Have you ever prayed for rain and then you didn't take your umbrella? Come on. I mean, were you really believing, right? You know? These people were having a hard time believing that God was going to answer their prayers. But this was what I know. Somebody had touched God about Peter. Somebody had touched the Lord about Peter. It takes faith to please God. And uh, a lot of people think, well, you know, I just don't have enough faith. I don't have enough faith. How many of you realize that you can increase your faith? You can increase your faith. You say, how do I do it? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If you need more faith, get into the Word. Start reading the Word every day. Start trusting God every day. Start believing God every day. And besides, the devil will tell you, you need a mountain load of faith. 
in order to be able to see your prayers answered. Listen, you do not need a mountain of faith. All you need is a mustard seed of faith. A little bit of faith. A tiny little must. The mustard seed is so small, you can hardly even see it. You can hardly even see it. But if you have that little amount of faith, the Word says you can speak to the mountain, and the mountain will have to move. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. You say, well, what is a mountain seed? What is a mustard seed of faith? I think it's what Abraham had. When Abraham took Isaac up to be offered, you want to know what the Scripture says he did? He reasoned in his mind. People think that, that faith is a blind leap in the dark. It's not. Faith is simply reasoning about God. And Abraham said, you know something? I believe that if I, that if I offer my son Isaac as the Lord told me to do, I believe that God will raise him back from the dead because that that's how great he is. That's just a small mental reasoning thing. And let me tell you something. You can reason your way into depression and discouragement. And you can reason your way right out of it if you believe God. And you can make your reasons why. That God is good. He will heal. God is good, gracious. He will do this. He is faithful. Just go on and just reason your way. That's called a mustard seed of faith. Would you stand with me today? Amen. Thank you for letting me just share this word today. Man. Man, y'all must have just made me preach too long today. It's y'all's fault. No, it's not. I'm glad you're here today. We're going to pray today.